the perfection in actions that is visible in this universe refutes the possibility that these actions raise from lifeless and unconscious causes. Putting lifeless and unconscious causes aside, there is such perfection in these actions that the most intelligent of the creatures, the human, is unable to produce such deeds. In fact, the human is impotent to even understand most of them. We will provide three examples to better comprehend this topic, and we will reflect on these examples with the proof of the perfection in actions. One action that is thought to be very simple for man is the ability to swallow. Let us see how this process takes place. When we swallow, the uvula and the soft palate rise and cover the path that leads to the nostrils of our nose. Our breathing stops due to a reflex. At the same time, a second structure in our throat covers the breathing tube that leads to our lungs. These structures return to their previous states after the food reaches the food tube and or esophagus. Nevertheless, we are oblivious when this happens. The process of swallowing does not finish so easily. In fact, the difficult part comes after this. Swallowing the remaining and dispersed flour-like food particles is really difficult. To overcome this difficulty, first the particles must unite, become a smooth texture, and convert to a certain size. The salivary glands that are located under the tongue discharge the saliva that is produced into the mouth. The smallest of the salivary glands, which are two to three grams, secretes a viscous, thick, mucus-like liquid. This liquid sticks the food particles together and brings them to the shape of a morsel. Afterwards, the morsel's surroundings lubricate. Swallowing this morsel becomes much easier, and the only task that we are left with is to begin the process of swallowing. Only 1% of the action of swallowing, which is a very simple action, belongs to the human, and that is to begin swallowing. If this perfect action is not attributed to God Almighty, then 1. Who orders the uvula and the soft palate to cover the path that leads to the nostrils of the nose? 2. Breathing in and out stops as a reflex. Who set up this system? The entity who designed this process must be cognizant of and compassionate towards us. Who else is there other than God who can be cognizant of us, show us compassion, and who has enough power to design the system? 3. In the process of swallowing, the breathing tube is covered by a structure. If the breathing tube is not covered, and if the morsel falls into the breathing tube, then death could occur. Who took this measure for us? 4. Who placed the salivary glands under the tongue? 5. If it is the tongue that fulfills this task on its own, then from whom did it learn to produce the saliva that sticks the food particles together? 6. A person cannot lay claim to these actions by saying, I am doing all of this by my own free will. He or she is oblivious to the process of swallowing, which is one of the simplest actions. In that case, who makes sapient processes operate our body machines in the most perfect way without us knowing? As it is seen, even a process that is as simple as swallowing cannot be explained without attributing it to God Almighty. How can the others be explained? Now, let us move to our second example and look at the sapient activity that takes place in the cell wall. Many experiments have proven that plants choose which mineral particles to take. The cell wall and its membrane have been designed to possess a unique structure for the plant's process of selection. While the structure allows necessary substances access, it prohibits poisonous and unnecessary particles from entering. The idea of people pushing against a door to enter a stadium is similar to the pushing of substances in their attempts to enter the plant. However, in order to get in, they must present a ticket to the cell wall and receive permission to enter. If the minerals were to enter and exit a plant haphazardly, then this would cause the death of the plant. Every plant has been created with the ability to choose substances that are necessary for its structure. Let us not forget that the selection of minerals change during different phases, different seasons, 
and different environments. Now, we are going to make a comparison between the cell wall and ourselves. We are the smartest of the creatures. We have intelligence, knowledge, and will. Yet, we do not know what our daily nutritional needs are, from which foods we can best fulfill our needs, and how much we should consume. To obtain this knowledge, we must become a nutrition specialist, or a doctor, which requires years of study. Yet, the cell wall has not attended any schools and does not know how to read or write. Yet, it works like a nutrition specialist and a doctor, as it permits the access of minerals that are necessary for the body and blocks others from entering. Now we ask, is the cell wall the true agent of this work? Or is there an entity of reason behind the curtain who conducts these works? Now let us see our third example. Man has 60,000 biological abilities. Through another expression, we can compare the human to a passcode that has been formed from 60,000 digits. Everything from our hair strands to the color of our eyes is written and or identified with this passcode. 30,000 of the 60,000 digits are present with the mother's cells. However, the passcodes are all found jumbled like 4, 45, 143, 34,657. The missing digits are completed by the father's cells. However, the father has 250 million sperm cells. The mother's cells must find the cells that carry the numbers missing from the 250 million sperm cells and must produce them in the shortest time possible. Because their lives are not that long, we can clarify it more. If they handed you a card with 30,000 digits that variously ranged from 1 to 60,000 and put 250 million bags in front of you and then said, the digits that are missing from the card that is in your hand can be completed by the digits in one of these bags. Examine the bags individually and find the bag that holds the digits that will complete your insufficient card. Would we be able to do such a thing? And if we were, how many years would it take for us to be able to do this? Nevertheless, one egg cell is able to do it in a few hours, and as a result, a life form comes into being. Can this miraculous deed be attributed to another agent other than God? If one denies God, then how can this performance be explained? In this proof, we explain that the perfections and actions proved the existence of God Almighty. And for this, we only provided three simple examples. Even these three basic examples proved that if these perfect actions are not attributed to God, then they cannot be explained and that no one other than God can conduct them. Now, compare the other performed actions in the universe to these three deeds and think of the answer to this question. Who other than God can lay claim to these sapient actions and be the agent of such perfect deeds?